Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining uh, my group seminar today. Uh, just ask for our video come review and conference. Okay. So my name is Xin Zhen, and uh, uh, today I'm going to present uh, uh, my study about understanding the interaction between urban climates and buildings for sustainable design. And uh, uh, first, I would like to briefly talk about uh, the background, background and the motivation of the, uh, this topic. Uh, first, about, uh, is what is urban climate? So, uh, urban climate are uh, any set of uh, climatic conditions uh, that prevail in large metropolitan and that are different, uh, different from the climate of its rural uh, surroundings. And, and uh, here, uh, uh, in specific, uh, the wind and thermal environment um, uh, in urban area can be strongly modified by the construction of buildings uh, by the growth of the urban area. For example, uh, what we see here is uh, uh, the wind speed measured in, the, uh, in Hong Kong, and the red line indicates the wind speed measured in the city center, the King's Park, and we can see uh, the wind speed reduced year by year, it's an annual average wind speed. And uh, uh, the blue line is the wind speed measured outside of the Hong Kong, so uh, on the island outside of Hong Kong. And we can see uh, the annual average wind speed almost keeps stable in the past uh, five decades. So uh, 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 we can conclude that the reduction of the wind speed inside the city center is not because of the climate change. It's because of the construction of the uh, construction of the buildings in Hong Kong. So uh, we can see from the, the photo from here, so the uh, comparison in the, between uh, uh, between uh, the 50 years. And uh, on the other hand side, on the other side. The construction of buildings can lead to the high wind speed at local, uh, uh, locally. So as we can see from this video, so it's a video recorded from a, a high rise building. So we can see the uh, uh, high wind speed uh, 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 leads to safe issue of pedestrians, not just uncomfortable. So this is a video taken uh, in the Netherlands where uh, the high wind speed usually can becomes a serious issue. So, okay, another problem is the uh, urban heat energy effect. So we can see here is the air temperature uh, in, in Shanghai, and we can see that um, the, the, the average air temperature every year in the urban area increases much faster than those uh, uh, in the rural area. Uh, so this is because of the construction. Um, the construction construction of the buildings modifies the energy balance uh, between the uh, urban canopy and the above, above atmosphere. Okay, on the other side, on the other hand, um, the building energy consumption, uh, the carbon emission is another global issue. So we know that a uh, uh, huge amount of uh, buildings, uh, building floor area, as it's here, has been have been built in the past and will be built in the future. And we can see also see uh, that uh, in China, the building energy consumption goes double in just in, the past, uh, in, that, in those 40 years. Okay, so those two, uh, those two aspects actually interact with each other. So we know that, uh, 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 for example, the urban heat energy effect increases the urban air temperature. And the higher air temperature uh, uh, leads to a requirement of the building cooling. So, so we have to use air conditioners to cool the building indoor space. And the air conditioner will release the heat, like hot air, uh, 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 towards the urban area, which which uh, which leads to a service or the heat energy effect. So those are coupled each other. Um, so. Uh, in sustainable design, so how to manage the interaction between urban climates and buildings uh, uh, is an important uh, issue, important uh, factor. And uh, uh, 
Uh, past studies, so most of uh, the past studies have been conducted before. Uh, however, uh, the influence of uh, the local urban features remain unclear. Therefore, uh, in our study, we have investigated uh, the influence of different uh, local urban and building features uh, from the following two aspects. Okay. So, uh, one is uh, wind environment and fertility dispersion, and uh, the second is uh, thermal and energy performance. So, then, uh, so now I will uh, talk about uh, uh, the study on wind environment and pollutant dispersion. So, before we were starting this topic, I would like to ask everyone here a small question. Okay, here we see two types of design. Uh, uh, two type of building layouts. So we, we have the A convergent design, we have B divergent design. So the wind coming from this side, and uh, we have a passage area here uh, showing in the blue color. So the question is, okay, so which design uh, is the highest wind speed in the passage area? So the answer A convergent design, B divergent design, and C we get the same uh, wind speed. Yeah. So, um, a few seconds, I think uh, you should have the answer in your mind. Okay, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> uh, before uh, reviewing the answer, I'd like to briefly talk about the uh, research methodology. Research methodology in exploring the wind environment around buildings. Uh, first, we have the experimental approach represented by a reduced scale wind tunnel test. We build the reduced scale building model and put it in the wind tunnel, and uh, uh, we measure the wind speed or pollutant concentration about the building. Okay, so this method is uh, extensive but uh, accurate. Uh, second, the second is the numerical approach with the computational fluid dynamics. Um, Two representative approaches. So one is large eddy simulation. So uh, uh, in this approach, uh, uh, the code solves the filter of the real stoke equation, and only the large eddies are solved, and small eddies are, are, are small eddies are modeled. And the second uh, approach we see uh, Reynolds average Navier stoke. So uh, it's uh, uh, usually we see rats. So in this method, it's only the mean fluid is uh, solved, and all the eddies are modeled. So in a short, so the second uh, second way is fast but less accurate. The first large eddy simulation is uh, uh, relatively uh, is, is much more reliable. Okay, so let's go back to the question. Okay. Uh, so this is a study conducted by my PhD supervisor a few years ago. So he starts from wind tunnel experiment. So he, he actually builds the uh, building models in the, in the wind tunnel to measure the wind speed. And uh, afterwards, uh, they also conducted computational fluid dynamic simulation, so the numerical approach. And uh, uh, both of them uh, 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 agree with each other. So the validation is quite good. So here I, I show you the uh, numerical simulated work, uh, simulated results. So we can see here, um, high wind speed occurs behind of the buildings uh, in the converging arrangement. But when we look at the diverging, diverging arrangement, we can see high wind speed occurs in the passage area. So uh, clearly, the answer, the correct answer of this question is B, the diverging design. Probably it's a little counterintuitive for, for, for people not, who is not working in this field. Okay, so why it happens? Why it happens? Uh, for the, for the uh, converging design, so actually a large amount of airflow we just uh, pass through the uh, building by moving upwards rather than uh, go through the passage area. That's why we do not get a high wind speed uh, at this uh, opening area. Okay, so we can see that this is a question that uh, uh, 
architects or urban planners uh, would be interested in. But obviously, we need the scientific approach to figure out the correct answer. Uh, so then I will move to uh, 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 a research gap in this research area. So we looked at a, a vast existing studies on urban grid environment and pollutant dispersion focused on the building design and the, uh, the geometry. Uh, however, uh, in reality, we know that uh, our cities are characterized by different uh, kind of building uh, local features. So for example, our buildings have the uh, facade, usually have the facade roughly details, like the balcony is shown here. And uh, uh, we, uh, our city also have, can have different road network design. Uh, so now I would like to talk about uh, our study concerning the local features. So, so start from the building facade roughly details. Okay. So this is a, a study uh, 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 a building balcony. Uh, we start from uh, validation for our numerical approach. So what we can see from the figure on the right hand side is the results from the mental experiment and also the results from uh, our numerical approach includes the uh, large dissemination and uh, the Reynolds average scenario stock. So we can see the, the, the black points are the results from the wind tunnel experiment and the, obviously a large eddy simulation get a much better results and uh, that's why we use, keep using this approach for further investigation. And uh, here we can see how the bulk pieces change, the, how the bulk pieces modify the wind flow pattern here in the building, as you see those two figures. And, uh, uh, so the numerical approach also enables us to do parametric, parametric studies to investigate the influence of the balcony geometrical characteristics. So here we can see two examples. So as the, as the architect, we, we want to uh, improve the wind speed on the balcony. For example, in Singapore, we always want better insulation, higher wind speed. So what we can do is increase the depth of the balcony. So obviously, we can see. The figure here, this is, uh, this is the uh, dimension is means be the contour at the middle cross section of the building, and the, uh, this figure is the uh, means be the unbounded spaces. So we can see uh, the last uh, case, so last uh, scenario, we have a much higher means be the unbounded spaces when we have a deeper balcony. Okay, uh, another, uh, uh, another uh, conclusion uh, that can be used for you that. Uh, how to reduce the mean speed on the balcony spaces. So this is useful for the uh, building design, especially in the Netherlands. So as I showed you before, high mean speed is the issue, the big issue for the, big issue for the uh, pedestrians and the residents. So, so what we can do is add, add the partition walls on the side of the balcony. So we can see the case P1. So case P1, we have two partition walls on both sides of the building uh, balconies, and we also have a case P2, P3, uh, which we have uh, one more partition wall in between, and the P3, we have three partition walls in between. So uh, the average wind speed uh, uh, can be reduced uh, by 80 like percent when we have uh, uh, three partition walls in between, and also two partition walls. On the side, on the side. So compared to the one without, compared to the one without. Okay. So uh, uh, this, uh, so this study focuses on isolated buildings. So we do not consider the surrounding influence. But what will happen? What will happen uh, uh, in a typical urban area that uh, we have a street canyon? So uh, we conducted studies for street canyon, and uh, we know that in street canyon. Uh, Another issue is the air quality, so because we, we really have failed moving inside the street canyon. And uh, uh, we now actually the electric vehicle is not that popular, so we still have the air pollution, and uh, it's the major source of the air pollutant as the pedestrian network. So those are vehicles. So we add the pollutant source as the area that uh, we may have the vehicles. And uh, we have four cases to study. So the first one, we do not have any rough details. 
And uh, another one, we have the, the balcony, the roughest detail on, uh, we, uh, on the leeward side. On the leeward side, and we also have a case with uh, details on both sides and only on the leeward side. Okay, so uh, we have conducted a simulation with an HAD simulation approach, and here is a, a video of our results. So we can say that uh, for the case without any bulk cases, we can see the high wind speed, and the wind speed is on the right hand side, so we can go down. And uh, when we have the bulk cases on the leeward side, still we can see the high winds can, be, can go down and remove the blue text. And here we, we see uh, uh, the case with bulk cases on the leeward side, and here is the case with bulk cases on both, both sides. So we can see in those two cases, the high winds cannot reach the pedestrian area. So we can see clearly from the two animation below. So the pollutant accumulates uh, into the pedestrian area. Uh, we can see it more clearly from uh, from the time average result. Sorry, the time average result. So k k here k is the dimension is uh, wind velocity, and uh, uh, the c plus here is the dimension is uh, pollutant concentration. Okay, so we can see that when we have, uh, especially the two cases below, when we have uh, rough details on the right hand side, on the windward side, uh, we can see uh, 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 the significantly reduce the mean speed and move move the mean uh, the mean edge, so the, the core of the, the vertex upwards, much upwards, and uh, it results in. Uh, much higher pollutant concentration you can see from the, the, the figure with C class. Okay. Um, so we talked about uh, uh, a small scale uh, pollutant concentration. At the larger scale, at the larger scale, uh, the human exposure to traffic pollutant is mainly controlled by the road network design. And the road network the design also plays an important role in partly traffic capacity. Uh, generally, there are two typical strategies. So generally, two typical strategies to hold sufficient uh, traffic volume. One is to build dense and uh, dense and uh, uh, narrow road networks, low traffic volume on each road, and uh, uh, represented by the transmission in some type. So uh, the, the government wants to uh, like reduce the traffic volume on the main road, so they open the small road inside of the uh, residential area. So that's why we, we can have a dense, dense street network with narrow road. Okay, another another solution is build a few multi-link wide roads and create large urban blocks. So we can see the example on the right hand side. This is a super block transition in Barcelona. So they merge the small roads, the traffic from a small road to uh, a few big roads, and then they make the space inside a pedestrian area. Okay. So uh, our, our study, so we want to investigate their influence on the human uh, exposure to traffic pollutants. So, uh, so in our study, we built we built urban neighborhood based on real city and to consider the road network. Uh, three kind of road network designs. So we, we have the mean block, we have the regular block, and the super block. Okay, so we uh, we made some assumptions here. We are not as expert in traffic uh, uh, research area. So we assume, okay, assume the total traffic volume are the same in you know, three, three uh, scenarios. So for example, here we have a narrow road, just one lane. And the regular block, we have uh, like a median road, and then the super block, we have uh, like wide road, and the total area, the total area are the same, identical. And uh, we pay attention to the area of interest, which within the red, like dashed lines, we have 32, 32 buildings inside. So we, we pay attention to that. So the surrounding area where the uh, surrounding buildings will uh, generate uh, like to simulate the real urban area because we already have the buildings around to affect the wind environment inside. Okay. Um, we define a few areas. So we have the outdoor places uh, shown by the, the green panel. So the area that we do not have building and road within the area of interest. 
And we run the simulation also, all, uh, we conduct all, all, my, all simulations that uh, were based on the large anti simulation approach. And then we can have the pollutant uh, concentration data uh, uh, in the entire domain, entire domain. And uh, uh, the release rate, release ratio of the pollutant area is based on the literature. So uh, uh, we have references. And uh, then, Based on the results, we can calculate the personal intake fraction. Okay, the personal intake fraction is uh, uh, the emitted pollutant uh, inherent average by the uh, by each resident. So actually, it's the dimension is uh, uh, quantity uh, calculated by this equation, which involves uh, 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 involves the, the data of residential behavior, like uh, how long they spend time on the road transit, on the outside space or indoor space. And then, we first we calculate uh, uh, the interpersonal, interpersonal intake fraction of the 35 buildings within the area of interest. Uh, and uh, uh, the results are presented from level 1 to level 6, because our, our building has 6 floors. So we can see the upper one, uh, figure A is the results from the mini block, and we can see that uh, uh, the distribution of the personal intake fraction are quite uniform. So almost every or uh, each building has the same value. But when we look at the results from the super block or uh, the, 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 uh, the regular block case, so a few buildings suffer from very high personal intake fraction. The relatives inside of inside of those buildings, so uh, uh, which can be ten times higher than the uh, a few buildings inside of the block. So, for example, we can see the figure E. So, which means okay, so uh, of course we protect a few uh, the residents who live inside, but sacrifice the people out uh, living close to the load level, uh, to close to the load area. Okay, so uh, this tells us that when we uh, when we when we conduct the design, so we may put the vulnerable population and uh, old people so, uh, inside, and we want to have a uh, want to have a super block, in a super block load, load network. Okay, so here we, uh, what, uh, I, uh, what I'm showing here is outdoor personal interaction, which means when people uh, stay out outdoor rather than in. Space. And we can see that in general, the super block, super block leads to the higher intake fraction uh, for all the age groups. And uh, 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 the young people and adults are quite sensitive to the street network design because they spend more time on the road region rather than the, uh, rather than the, uh, the other outdoor area. Okay, uh, and uh, we can see in really broad view, you need to have a better, uh, better for all the age groups. Okay, so uh, then I will move to the second part. As, as I already talked about, the uh, building facade roughly speaking, like balconies. Uh, however, we have another kind of roughly speaking, which is the building vertical granary system. Showing in this figure, and uh, so it's quite interesting to uh, to investigate their influence on, on the building and our environment. So this is an experimental study I have been involved in. So uh, it uh, it focused on two educational buildings. So first is the uh, one with green uh, building vertical greenery system I'm showing here, and the second one we don't have. Okay. Uh, uh, as shown in this picture, and uh, we have done um, some set measurement for the, the room inside, so uh, we can see from the cycle. Um, okay, so here is the results of the uh, surface temperature. So we measure the surface temperature in the inner surface temperature of the window. So I'm shown uh, here. So uh, the horizontal axis, the time. And uh, vertical axis is the height. So uh, we use the thermal camera to measure the temperature. So then that's why we have 
the temperature, uh, the spatial distribution of the, the surface temperature. And uh, for the case with uh, the granular systems, uh, actually, uh, we have a uh, irrigation in the morning, so around the 8 o'clock. So the result we can see is that uh, uh, the uh, irrigation of the vertical granular system with the middle garden has a significant impact on the from the interior of the surface temperature. Okay, so as we can see here, the shown by the blue color, so we have a much lower temperature, like 28 degree. And uh, uh, besides this, we proposed the improved strategy of adding a soil temperature sensor to control the smart uh, irrigation system, uh, 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 which can guarantee a good performance of the cooling, the cooling performance uh, for the building facade. Building envelope because the peers that they just to focus on the like window garden, greenery system, they do not pay attention to the building, they have influence on the buildings. Okay. Um, so, I already talked about a uh, few specific technologies to improve the out, outdoor wind environment for the building energy efficiency. But uh, in our design practice, uh, Architecture or urban planners. Uh, a designer always needs to set a balance between multiple objectives. So, hereby, I'm going to talk about uh, our study on simulation framework for the earlier design guidelines of urban streets to improve both outdoor summer comfort and building energy efficiency in summer. And here you see uh, urban streets. Street and uh, uh, we parameterize the, uh, the design of our street into a few parameters. We, can, we will have to uh, uh, set the urban uh, canyon layout, includes the aspect ratio, uh, and to choose the canyon orientation like from the west to east or north, uh, south to south to north. Somehow. We have to determine the, uh, the building surface material. The uh, beam of the building walls, uh, like the insulation of the buildings, the thermal mass. We, we also have to design a few like landscape elements, like the, the train size, train height, and also like the ground, uh, the, the street ground, the street ground. And uh, uh, so, uh, upon this, uh, we uh, we adopt a uh, uh, code, so we, which is we see. Uh, advanced urban canopy model, uh, UCA. So we develop a building energy model embedded inside the urban canopy model uh, with uh, uh, ability to simulate the building integrity of the vortex VIP rate. And with this model, we can simulate the interactive indoor and outdoor, outdoor environment, climatic environment. Okay, so we uh, we conduct parametric simulations so, uh, uh, with, with with the simulated result, we can get uh, first is the total and peak building cooling load. And secondly, we can get to the uh, air temperature inside the street canyon, uh, the uh, humidity, relative humidity, uh, radiative, radiative uh, temperature, and uh, also the mean speed roughly. And with those results, we can calculate the UTCI, the universal thermal climate index. Uh, uh, you know, 1.5 meter. Uh, with this result, with this result of the UTCI, we can calculate the thermal stress hour. So then I will, uh, I will move. Uh, I will talk about the thermal stress hour soon. Okay. So our case study, I, uh, I will present in the one uh, for four four coastal cities uh, from Xiamen, Guangzhou, Haiku, and Xinjiang. Four of them are located in tropical or subtropical. Region. Okay, so uh, so let, let me talk about the in, uh, indicators. So, okay. uh, uh, first two indicators is the heat stress hour, so we say H35. Uh, second is the extreme heat stress, heat stress hour. So two of them are based on the de definition of the UTCI. Okay. So we say with the UTCI body is higher than 46 degree. People will suffer from extreme heat stress, and uh, when it, it's larger than 32 degree, uh, uh, we have strong heat stress. Uh, heat stress, and we calculate the accumulated hour 
uh, with the UTCI line other than 32. So then we get the hidden space hour value. And the other uh, indicator we, we pay attention to is, uh, as mentioned before, the total at peak building cooling low and also the mean Kenyan air temperature. Uh, okay, then, then uh, we choose two major indicators uh, to be prioritized. So we have heat space hour and total building cooling load. Okay, so the next step is to choose uh, the line parameters. So here we have line, uh, uh, the line parameters and the, the options. So each parameter will have two, two, six, uh, four options. We cannot have too many because we want to evaluate all the combinations. But uh, uh, those options are based on common factors of the building design. Okay, so we can see the value like the window to wall ratio like from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8, and some hours of the other factors. And then we run the simulation for all the combinations, and uh, each city will have more than 2,000 without, therefore, we can value for all the scenarios. Okay, uh, then we calculate the sensitivity by using the delta x, so which is the result from uh, one extreme uh, 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 solution with one extreme option substituted by another extreme option. So we can see here, uh, is we use the solution from window to wall ratio equal to 0 0.8 substituted by the one with 0 0.2. Okay, so then uh, we plot all the, the set of the results in the far chart. Bar chart. So the bar chart indicates the general trend that we 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 we, we, we exclude the strategy of increasing window to wall ratio. So like we increase the window to wall ratio, we can see uh, generally uh, those two parameter indicators decrease. Okay. So we conduct this for eleven events to here. Uh, all of them are achieved by changing those parameters. So uh, let's see the results of the chart. You can see that uh, uh, increase uh, with, uh, the wall of needle and increasing the ground of needle. The okay, so the uh, strongly decrease the uh, mean Kenya air temperature. We can see from the red bar. So always, always minus. So left hand side of the neural axis. So however, it do not meet uh, the, uh, the reduction of the heat space hour because. Uh, when we increase the albedo, the okay, so most short wave solar radiation reflected on the body of people, so which increase the, the heat space hour in this perspective in, in Shang, this is the case in Shang. So then we look at the Singapore. Uh, here we show the two prioritized indicators. One is the heat space hour, we see the, 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 the blue bar, and the second is the total building cooling load. The yellow bar. And uh, in Singapore, we can see, and actually, this result is not only for, for Singapore, so other cities also have such feature. Okay, so when we increase the chain traction and increase the chain size, we always get reduction of both right. indicators. So the, the, the thermal stress tower and building cooling down, so we call them, uh, we count them as the building structure. Okay, so we can look at the other uh, uh, strategy, uh, strategies like uh, uh, changing to BIP the window or uh, increasing the window to wall ratio or changing the orientation. So actually we change the orientation from somehow like south to north to east to west. So those strategies, okay, those strategies can significantly reduce one indicator, but uh, with the cost of increasing another indicator. So we come to them as the conflict strategies, conflict strategies. Okay, so then, uh, okay, uh, based on the result, we can do a trade off analysis to find out the method solution of, uh, uh, of the design strategies for the conflict, conflict indicators. Because those two are the, are the prioritized one. And we can see that uh, uh, also uh, the, the, this is the threat of optimal solution. So we can see the solution is also sensitive to the availability of the design options. So like uh, when we look at the, uh, the two figures below, okay. so the orientation uh, when the street canyon runs from south to north, south to north, uh, it's easy to achieve a lower thermal uh, heat stress hour, so shown by the red point, but uh, it always comes to complete the price of the higher total building cooling hour. 
uh, and we can see uh, when the state canyon runs from the west to east, it's, uh, it's not easy to achieve the higher building, uh, uh, lower uh, heat streets are, which is a better thermal comfort. But we, we, we can have a lower building, you know, can see from the foreground uh, place. Okay. May I interrupt a little bit? So, the, the clarify the heat stress means the meaning the thermal comfort from outside the building. I mean. Outdoor. Outdoor. Thermal, outdoor, right? outdoor thermal comfort. Uh, the, the street outside the building. So, the, the building cooling low means like a thermal comfort inside the building. Uh, no, building cooling low means uh, the energy, okay, the energy load that we will use to. Yeah, but it's it correspond. Correspond the thermal, the, the temperature or something inside the building. Yeah, exactly. So, so why the outside building? Why the inside building? Uh, yes, if you consider, okay, if you consider the the indoor space is not uh -huh. air conditioned, okay, uh -huh. so the temperature will go up. Then we need more energy to cool the indoor space. Okay, so basically, the result shows that uh, there is a maybe a debate or trade-off between the temperature outside building and the temperature inside building. Yeah, the, the, it's, it, it exists here, in my case. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, yes, so this is, this, the correct optimal solution can, pro, uh, can be provided to uh, policy makers or designers for reference, so they can find a trade-off between those two prioritized indicators. Uh, okay, actually, this uh, in this simulation we assume we assume the outdoor unit of air conditioner is located on the top of the building, roof of the building. Otherwise, the result may be different. But what we propose in the simulation framework, like from step one to step eight, of course, you can change the settings. Like uh, we assume the air conditioner heat is uh, like if. Uh, like uh, released to the Kenya area, and then you you may find a different uh, results. Okay. Um, okay. So in the end, I want to uh, talk about uh, 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 summarize my presentation. So we talk, I talked about the wind environment and pollutant dispersion. I talked about uh, 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 and the energy performance. So and involves different uh, experiment, uh, research approach, so experimental approach, numerical approach, that can include uh, wind power tests, computational fluid simulation, and urban chemistry model simulation. And uh, the conclusion, okay, first is uh, the multi-physical challenge, uh, challenges posed by urban climate and building interaction could be mitigated by shoot for local strategies. And secondly, uh, the performance of different local strategies that it's stronger relation across cities and uh, sustainable design should be promoted on a city by city basis. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. That's my presentation. Uh, feel free to ask me. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Very clear. Yeah, because we are now doing a BITV, so I'm uh, extremely, uh, extremely interested in the uh, uh, BIGV part and especially the thermal part. I know you're talking about wind speed and uh, pollutant and uh, thermal comfort, but uh, uh, as far as uh, we discussed with uh, 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 with agencies and some like URA, some they are also very interested in the thermal part uh, in, in the BIGV and uh, and those uh, greenery. So uh, yeah, I'm very very interested in that you can measure them. So one question is that. Uh, this thermal comfort, uh, not only the heat stress and building cooling demand, uh, you, can, you, you simulate it by experiment uh, approach or uh, numerical approach. Uh, yeah, uh, or simulated by the numerical, uh, conducted by numerical approach. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, in hospital, uh, as shown in this figure, so developed in the past. So we conducted simulation with this mode, urban can uh, advanced urban canopy. Okay, urban can canopy model. The urban canopy model will, will uh, output the, uh, the, 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 the two, the, the thermal uh, stress and the cooling load, right? 
Yeah. Shows are cut from the urban calendar. Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, the thermal steel summary is calculated indirectly, okay, based on the results, the output of the, this model. So we can say that the output of this model includes uh, the uh, wind speed inside the speed canyon, the relative humidity inside the canyon, and the air temperature inside the canyon, and uh, also the uh, radiative temperature, the TMRT. Yeah. So with those four parameters, we can calculate the, uh, the UTCI. And with UTCI, we calculate the thermal scale sum. Oh, okay. it, it's a bit of indirect, but uh, uh, we finally get uh, the, uh, the, the most important indicator. Uh, the building cooling load is also from this. It's from building energy model. Uh, yes, because uh, uh, I'm building energy model embedded inside the, the, the energy model. So uh, the output of the building energy model uh, includes the total and peak building cooling load. So actually, it's hourly, hourly building cooling load. Hourly building cooling load. And then, we, then we can calculate the total and the peak. Okay. So anyway, so it's theoretical, uh, theoretical sounds, uh, theoretical way, right? Yeah, so uh, based on the theoretical, uh, like the knowledge equations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so do you mean that uh, we, if we have this model, so given any uh, ar uh, archetypes of this building and uh, uh, the 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 PV and the, the greenery on the surface of the building, so we can use this model to uh, measure the outdoor temperature and the indoor thermal comfort, right? Uh, we can say that uh, uh, this model can handle uh, simplified uh, urban uh, morphology. So first, it's a, it's a 2D model, two-dimensional. So we assume it's uh, uh, the street canyon runs like uh, infinitely in this way. So we take a section of it. So another, uh, I have a few assumptions, because this is indeed a simplified model. That's why we can run fast. Uh, fastly for like five thousand cases. Yeah. So uh, not for every. Yeah. Because the, the, the reason why I'm very curious because there is a, a PhD student in our group. Uh, his PhD topic is focusing on uh, calculating the outdoor thermal comfort uh, with the BIPV. Oh, okay. So uh, she has uh, focused on this area for, for quite a long time, and she still do not have very clearly the outcome. So, so that I'm very curious that you already have this model can, can do this magic thing. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't know uh, how detailed the PhD student is looking at it, okay. So for the general, uh, for the general generic street canyon morphology, our model can handle this. But uh, if you will be able to complicate, to complicate uh, realistic, uh, realistic urban area, you put the BFPV on the slide, uh, you have to simplify them to a few parameters and input in this model, then you can get the results. Yeah. Simplify this. Simplify, simplify model, yeah. I see now I have a question. Yeah, sure. Okay. sure. Thanks for the presentation. So in this uh, case study for Shaman and uh, Singapore context, uh, what parameter or uh, what parameters do you change for this? To case studies, do you just simply uh, change the like your climate information model, or you also change like uh, the open forms or the typical greeneries in these two different uh, cities? Yeah, in, uh, in those case studies, we uh, we use the typical meteorological year weather uh, data. So weather data we do not change. So what we have. What, 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 mean, what, what do you mean? Don't change the better input. The better input with the typical meter. meter so TMI, 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 yes, 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 TMI okay. in those two cities. But what we have evaluated is those design parameters. Uh -huh. So you can see the Kenya orientation, uh, the grass fraction on ground, uh, the wall insulation, thermal mass, etc. Like some important one, window to wall ratio. So, in total, nine parameters, and each parameter has three to uh, two to four options. So, so this is what we have done. So in total, we have more than five thousand combination, more than five thousand combination uh, for each city. Do you mean you identified the optimal parameters 
for like season four and also the optimal parameters for the shaman case? Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will not actually not only for the not only for the four city here, but the, what I have shown here, uh, what I have shown here is the four cities. Uh, four cities like uh, uh, Xiamen, Guangzhou, Haikou, Singapore. So the results can provide us a lot of information, but uh, you know, limited by time. But I can show you some example. The example uh, those uh, uh, those conclusions are example that uh, I obtained from 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 the result. For example, actually we see we see the the the, the, the tricky point here. So, uh, the different results from uh, 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 in terms of the uh, air temperature and uh, uh, thermal comfort. This is only for China. But when we look at the high cold, okay, they are consistent. So when we like increase the wall albedo or increase in the ground albedo, they always reduce the air temperature, also improve the thermal comfort. So I can only show the example of, uh, in a few pages. Okay, and uh, in terms of the building model, is it typical for this species? The building model, uh, the building energy model is inconsistent with any city. I mean, the, the shape of the building. Uh, okay, the shapes of building are fixed in our case study, yes. It is fixed. So we consider one, two, one, three, ten, so like six flow. Uh, uh, like uh, 12 meter high, 12 meter width of the speed can be in the case study. But uh, those parameters can be investigated in the future. Because we propose a simulation framework, we, we can put a, like a straight aspect ratio in this list. Then we do a simulation again, so we can find uh, like the best aspect ratio, something like that. And uh, also in the trade off analysis, um, it's um, uh, not clear. About say say the shaman kids, I mean the uh, bottom left figure. You mean uh, say the is the increase of wind load the hours of uh, heat stress increase? Right? Uh, the two figure below. I mean, I just say the shaman figure in the bottom the bottom one. Yeah. Say the say the for those points at. Uh, uh, the cooling load with 25, around 25, uh, they have the heat stress hour less than 8, right? But for, say, for, for the cooling load that around uh, like uh, 22.5, the heat stress hours are, I mean, like uh, 9 or 10. What does that mean? Yeah, this is the best trade of the routine, a, a, a parental optimal solution. So, so which means uh, uh, on the right corner, so the best solution uh, that w when we have a relatively large building cooling load, uh, the heat stress that we can achieve is no more than eight, no more than eight. So it's a trade off analysis. Like, uh, uh, okay, so we optimize uh, both parameters uh, in this field. And the color, actually, the color is the availability of different uh, uh, parameters. So, like uh, the red color is when we only have the option of the street can runs from uh, south to north. So, it's shown by there. And then the green color is we only have the option from the uh, have the street option of the street canyon runs from uh, west to east. So we can say uh, it's sensitive to the availability of the design options. Because when we design a street, sometimes we can only put it uh, in this way, south to north. So then we, the solution is like this, by the way, the, the red, red panel. Yeah. Uh, the higher the higher cooling load, does that mean the output temperature is uh, much higher? In this case, the heat stress hours is supposed to be uh, longer, right? Uh, higher cooling load. Higher cooling load, usually, yeah, in the optimal solution, the higher cooling load uh, uh, corresponding to the low, lower heat stress hour. But it do not, somehow, in Shaman, it do not miss the lower air condition. Because, uh, as I showed you before, so somehow you you use a few design strategies like increase the wall of beetle, you 
you decrease the energy temperature, but do not increase the like uh, thermal comfort. Do not reduce the thermal stress hour. So, so, so what, what I can say is only for heat stress hour, not for air transmission. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, just, just, I don't think it's very, very nice, very interesting. Um, in the previous graphs, which you showed you at the axis, um, the lowering of the upper, that was pretty sure what you mentioned it to. I mean, how did you then make sure this corresponds? If you go back, maybe yeah. it's not back. Yeah, exactly, in those. So, um, how did you match those scales? Um, is this in any way that in other ways? In other graphs, you sorry, can you go back another time? Uh, you mean this one? No, uh, okay, uh, probably, yeah, exactly. Here you have like up in the upper, yeah, in the upper graph, you have like the, the temperature difference, um, which is indoors, right? Uh, the temperature is outdoor, uh, outdoor temperature on the street, in the street, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. So this is not this is for outdoor, this is only outdoor. Yeah, only outdoor. Because uh, we assume, okay, uh, we assume the indoor air temperature keep keep constant. We have a set point, like 20, I think it's twenty six degree. Yeah. Okay, so indoor is always like this temperature, but uh, the changing of parameter is the heat, the building cooling on. Okay, that's why in the others we have the the, the trade off because we have the indoor. Yeah, the trade off is for indoor outdoor. Yeah. And, and that is because indoors you just take all the energy and put it on roof and, and release the heat there. Yeah, that's the reason. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the air conditioner out, outdoor unit is on yeah. the roof, so hot air go up rather than go inside the street hanger. And uh, like, uh, uh, like when we increase the window to wall ratio, so the indoor cooling, like I would say, indoor cooling air can cool the building aluminum and also can Benefit the outdoor thermal comfort, but it comes with the price of the uh, building, high building cooling on. So, this is what I uh, have shown in the case study. One question. Yeah, yeah because uh, we are focusing on the, the BIPV part. So, I'm quite curious about you saying here the BIPV in Singapore. So, if we put the BIPV, because uh, now Singapore, uh, maybe in the future, they will put the BIPV on the facade. So if we uh, put the BIPV on facade, uh, 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 from your result, you can say that uh, this uh, policy will reduce the uh, the reduce the indoor, right? Reduce the indoor cooling load. Yeah, building cooling load. Reduce. But will increase the outdoor thermal uh, uh, heat stress. Uh, so what is the underlying reason behind it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's an interesting point. Yeah, uh, this strategy is changing to BIPV window, which means we have such open window, and then we change it to BIPV window, and we uh, we obtain the result uh, uh, from the uh, the result with BIPV window subtracted by the one without. Okay, so after we have a BIPV window, somehow the solar radiation. Inside, reflected yeah. or generates uh, in heat power in natural power. So that's why we significantly reduce the uh, building cooling. And regarding your question on the thermal stress hour, uh, that is because uh, um, because the like out so, yeah yeah especially the out like uh, external surface temperature of the building will, will become much higher. Yeah. Okay. That's uh. Yeah. That exactly. Uh. Okay. That is that is what the PIPD student in our group are looking into. So uh, it's very interesting that yeah, that is, should be the reason. Because without the PIPD, the the solar radiation will be absorbed by this building. Yeah, absorbed by this building. Uh, inside or inside. Yeah, inside. So we increase the indoor uh, air temperature. Air temperature. Yeah. So if we have a PIPD, it's like a. a Ins insulate. It's like an insulation. An uh, insulation so that the solar radiation was uh was uh will be reflected by the PIPV so it cannot enter the building. Yeah, so it will cool in the building. Right? Yeah, it reduce the energy consumption. Yeah, cool okay. uh, but it will reflect it back to the street. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
So some strategy can be like you install the VHB part and the higher part of the building, rather than the lower part. Because it's people always they use like the wrong level. You know? So okay. it will have less influence if you put it lower uh, or higher. Uh, yeah. And another another uh, very interesting question that can you can you put back to the grass? I mean the, the greenery, you see the you show the temperature for different greenery. Uh, oh, you mean the uh, vertical the, the greenery system? system? Yeah, 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 vertical uh, yeah. greenery system. Uh, yeah, this one. You mean? You mean this? Yeah, the previous, the previous. Yeah, this one. Uh, okay. So once again, this uh, thermal temperature, this one, surface temperature is mm -hmm. also. Uh, calculated by, by simulation. Oh, the, this the one is the experimental step. Oh, this is, this is like we're using the thermal camera. So put, it, put it there and face into the okay. this side and then we measure the, this surface condition. So it's like a combination of experiment and. Well, well some, some cases you, you, use, you use experiment and some cases yeah. you, 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 you use the marathon. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, like. Uh, to show that I have more skills. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, but I think it's, it's good that you, you should calibrate, you can compare the two approaches. Yeah, yeah, indeed. indeed. This is a good point for future study. Okay, so you run the simulation to simulate the influence of the vertical binary system on the building indoor space, uh, indoor surface condition. But I, I, of course, I can see some challenge here because it's not easy to model the irrigation effect. And the, the, the vegetation is complicated. Okay. It's complicated, so in the numeric mode or any class, so it's not and, okay. and even <laughs> okay. And, and even from this result, it's, it's, it, it, it feels quite surprised because I know that if we put some grass or greenery behind the uh, beside uh, outside. Outside, outside the building yeah. or cooling the building to, to some extent, yeah, yeah it, it's uh, some common knowledge. But I'm surprised that the effect is so significant you see with some greenery outside temperature was lower down by two two degree yeah no, it's, less two degree. Degree. it's like eight degree uh, yeah eight degree it's lower down by eight degree yes especially when we have the irrigation in the morning so because like after 11 o'clock the water is like uh, evaporated oh it's, it's because of the irrigation yeah yeah but if you look at this time Change is not uh, significant. Well, of course, it, it reduces the temperature, but not the height uh, uh, operates. So, the water is important. So, this is a key factor of the research. It's kind of how much uh, this uh, greenery contributes to the energy saving. Then, that's the uh, next question. Yeah, we didn't compare. But, uh, I think it can be significant. <laughs> it can be significant as we can see the influence of the temperature. Because those two classrooms, okay, they do not have, uh, the air condition in our system is not running. So we don't have air condition in our system inside, just a flow, flow, a free flow. So I think it can be like, uh, yeah, can be remarkable. Are those Pictures taken simultaneously under the same facade orientation. Yeah, okay, so they are taken simultaneously, uh, but a different building. So no. building A, building B. But the orientation of the facade is the same. So both yeah, of them are the same, but the building is different. Yeah, what? different building, but the construction is in the same time, same way. Why is there a gap around 3 pm? Can you go back to the image, please? Why is there a gap around? 4 p.m. in the vegetation. Why is there kind of this strip over there? 4 p.m. in the vegetation. Uh, yeah, 4 p.m. Um, yeah, it's because uh, uh, the the position of the sun. The so trend. the position of the sun, the solar angle. So yeah, if I remember correctly, in the in the morning they receive. Somehow, yeah. The orientation is the same. Yeah, and, and the orientation are the same because we, the green system has strong effect because they shape the uh, solar radiation. 
So you know, maybe you can you, you feel the difference uh, like at the lower is not large, but uh, uh, if we calculate it, it's still a strong difference. And uh, the solar, um, I would say, uh, the solar angle at uh, like around the four o'clock, it must be a, like a giving like a certain solar angle. And uh, the effect of the solar shading of the uh, of the green resistance system reflect at this time. So this one, we don't have any shading. The, you know, uh, the solar radiation directly reach on the building envelope. But this one, we, we, we don't have irrigation, but we still have the, 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 the plants. So the height of the vegetation is proportional in that image? Proportional to the other thing? The height of the vegetation? Yeah, is they, that they, just a small plant? This, this height. Uh, proportional to the height? I in fact remember correctly it's around uh, around this height. Around this height. So you can see lower part lower part will have a much better effect. And uh, the orientation of the facade was the same and the buildings surrounding the facade were also the same? Uh, sorry? The buildings surrounding each facade were also the same? Yeah, also the same. Uh, I did show the master plan of those two buildings, but uh, 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 they are, you know, those students are on parallel here. Yeah. This one, this one, this one, this one, this is the educational building. So we just find two, this one and this one, two, uh, two, two, uh, uh, sub, uh, like, like sub row of the building. Yeah, but maybe some, some air count has no work. We, we actually, we do not run, uh, the air conditioners were not running. Oh, not wrong. Not wrong. So all the temperature are like free flow to free oh, flow. Oh, the hot air coming stop. Yeah, air uh, stop. Oh. Yeah. And how about the the curtain? The curtain, you mean the curtain? Yeah, we keep them the same. No, uh, no, no curtain. So the thermal camera can directly measure the temperature on the uh, in, in in the surface of the glass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, there are uncertainties inside of the experiment because we we cannot control. Any parameters, any like construction details of the two buildings. Yeah. Okay. Then, then I have another question. Yeah. So regarding like our uh, almost all these uh, studies, you use either the experimental studies or numerical yeah. or even the, this kind of uh, measurement. Yeah, measurement. Mm -hmm. So how do you mesh these kind of things and validate or verify very very this? Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say most of the challenge part of the validation of the numerical part is that uh, we have to re reproduce the boundary condition yes. of the experimental study. This is extremely challenging for such unsighted machines yes. because so. we don't know a lot of things. So okay. the best is uh, we have experiment. Uh, we have experiment that we control everything. Yeah, because in the numerical uh, approach, many parameters you arbitrarily set. Yeah. Right? It's ideally you set. You said, but in the experimental study, many parameters you don't know. We don't know, yeah. Okay. It's complicated. Yeah, you can see also, like, uh, they have air conditioners randomly located here. You can also somehow influence uh, measure the temperature. <laughs> yeah. That's another question to the uh, first study about intake fractions. When you had the units, uh, I mean, when you had the graph results, what would it be like 70% of the pollutant emitted is the air age? You mean 70% of the pollutant? Well, what does it I, I didn't look quick enough at the equation, but maybe you can go back to the intake fraction here, this one. Yeah. Sorry. One more. Okay. This one here. So if it is uh, the personal intake fraction, if that is 0 0.7, does it mean 70%? Okay. Yeah. The same here? yeah uh, actually, uh, it is uh, somehow a dimensionless parameter, but but we present them in PPM. So ah, that's right. Okay. So yeah, that you know. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's like divided yeah, by thousands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in terms of percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Finally, the re finally the reductions you made when applying this building in a modern model saying that the solar panels are going to reduce something, reduce nothing. At what time was the estimation made? So the results were showing were they daytime results or are they nighttime results? Yes. Okay. 
uh, yeah, I did mention because there are a lot of details in my study. So what we simulated is the entire uh, months in summer, so months. July, uh, hourly. Uh, yeah, hourly. So entire months July hourly. Because uh, July is the it's an, it's an average for a month. So an hourly, hours, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Is there a reason why you said there are the range? Right. Uh, the range is because uh, there are too many results. Like I have 5,000 of them. 5,000 is a run, right? 5,000 is a run. And uh, for example, uh, 5,000 is a run in total. So oh, I have different parameters. Okay. Yeah, I have more than 1,000 yeah. results from the, uh, of the window to wall ratio equal to level 2. And we also have 1,000 for equal to level 5, level 0.8. And then we subtract. But my question is the performance of the TV panel will be different during the day and the night. Yeah, okay. Because uh, definitely. This, uh, you have considered this because you have run one month, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, they are different. But we, okay, in our work, we didn't uh, look inside this issue. So yeah, they are like different. Our, our, we didn't have the resolution of our. We didn't analyze in this way. Uh, so, okay. because we just uh, want to see the general performance. So the, the building, like the, the, the thermal space hour is the accumulated thermal space hour in that month, then divided by the total day, divided by the circuit. So we have like a seven hours, six hours, which is the daily average. But you, your approach can, can be uh, uh, detailed. Yeah, it can be, it can be. Can. Yeah. The results are quite detailed, a lot of results, but uh, we can do limited analysis. <laughs> Okay, in terms of the solar program, she is related to the one that you can speak to the model. Well, I think uh, it's the time to do it. We just run it out of time, so we can hang out the vision to see some zero excite for our questions. Yes, yes, feel free to contact me uh, by, by email. Uh, you can find my email usually on the website. Thank you so much.